It's Andre from High Performance Academy and I'm here with Scott Kuna from Insight Motorsport. Now last year we talked to Scott about this insane Astra behind us and Scott promised us last year there was a lot more to come from this car. He's back with it this year and he's gone through and done everything he said he would do. Now really what I want to focus on Scott is is some of the cool stuff you can do with the Mtron ECU that you mentioned to us last year yeah. and it's all about getting traction and uh, maintaining traction in a, a powerful front wheel drive car. Now, can you talk us through some of those tricks you're using to do so? So basically what we do is uh, we obviously go for the GPS on board and the ECU is reported uh, GPS coordinates so we know exactly where on the track the car is at all times and we use some strategies uh, in certain circumstances that require it to try to control uh, the traction. So in some cases we don't want to, well in many cases we don't want to get rid of any horsepower out of the engine if we can help it, so we build a map that we feel is going to get us the best performance, but certain place on the track it doesn't matter what you do, you'll never, you'll never get rid of the, the uh, traction problem. So we, we sector up the track uh, in these places and, and we employ some boost control strategies and sometimes we do a little bit of our traction uh, control changes um, to the model, the traction control, but only at that spot of the track. So when, when we're talking about boost control, what, what you're talking about there is reducing the boost in areas of the track where you know from experience or from previous data that the car is going to be more prone to wheel spin? Yeah, definitely. And. Uh, I mean this car we've only just got it running so we've had to extract the data first to find out places where it's going to be a problem and commonly with most of the cars here we all know the problem areas where you could predict to start with and once we locate that where we know that we're going to have to pull power out of the model we will. Okay so now, now by reducing that boost what you're really trying to do is it's kind of I guess you could call it uh, pre preemptive traction control you're trying to maintain as as much power in the car as you can and prevent that wheel spin from occurring in the first place is that right that's exactly right yeah. now on top of that obviously you've still got the uh, the situation where wheel spin may still happen even when you pulled that boost out now there's there's various ways of dealing with uh, traction control there's ignition retard there's uh, fuel cutting there's ignition cutting uh, closing the drive by wire throttle can you give us your own uh, sort of thoughts on which of those is a, is a preferred technique and how you use them? Well I believe all, all processes can be employed however I mean ultimately if you're trying to uh, pull power out fast the easiest way to do this is cut the engine so that's not desirable because it can upset the vehicle and it's much more difficult to, to refine and hone in but that ultimately is what's required to get to to correct a traction issue but we I tend to like to try to prevent it before it occurs or as it's uh, in onset before we have to go into a more aggressive means of traction control. So that again really comes back to, to that preemptive traction control, managing the amount of power the car's producing so that the power is matched to the available traction at that point and hence you don't need such aggressive traction control strategies? Yes, and not that I like doing that, I mean ultimately if I had my way we just put the maximum power down we can and we let it go and let the traction control work but, but that creates other stability issues when, when you are trying to get it set up so if it's always going to wheel spin at that particular moment on the track it's the best to at least get it close to being able to not overpower the track too much anyway. Inside the ECU strategies for traction control how are you deciding how aggressively the car's wheel spinning and in turn what particular process you're going to use to control it, whether you're going to do a cut or whether you're going to just simply use something like retard? Our system's a PID based call traction control system, uh, a lot of tables and a lot of runtime. So we decided to have a system where you would have a huge amount of runtimes dedicated to the traction function and it will give you the ability to, to create your own model if you will and integrate other functions within the ECU that can be incorporated with the traction control such as drive by wire, boost control and, and some of the other things. So right now you, you really only got this car put together literally yesterday and, and on the dyno for what I understand was a, around about a 10 minute tune so you haven't really had a chance yet to, to put these strategies in place for this particular event? I wouldn't say this event uh, we, uh, we, we, we're just getting a hold of the suspension and we've made some changes from a shakedown run and if it all looks good and the, and the driver's happy and we can actually feel we can get a lap down, 
I'll have enough data to, to employ the, the models that we've spoken about. So I'm hoping by the end of today that's possible, but we'll see how we go with the, the chassis beforehand. Well, look, Scott, you've uh, definitely got your hands full on at least getting the car up and running, and uh, we might ch touch base with you a little bit later on and see exactly how all those strategies work. So thanks for chatting to us and letting us know how that all works inside the MTROM. Cheers. Thanks, Andre. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.